Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. 100 years ago, most oil wells ended up with an eruption, meaning that the oil simply shot into the air, as you see in this picture. But that wasn't considered a big problem back then. If you do click carefully to the picture, you will recognize a lot of people, big and small. They all came back to have a look at this blowout. The height of the blowout was a measure of how successful the well was. The higher the gusher, the better the well. As long as only a few drilling rigs were hunting for oil, there was no problem. But if somebody just became rich because they found oil, then quickly a lot of other oil drillers came along. And then things got complicated and narrow in the oil field. There was always trouble somewhere due to the fact that not all wells showed the same productivity. Some wells produced much, while some produced less. Then the driller of the poor well got angry and assumed that the neighbors were producing some of his oil. Obviously, there was need for some measuring equipment, which allowed to check whether everyone stayed within their own lease with their borehole. In 1929, a certain Mr. Johnny Eastman had a really cool idea. He took a glass flask and filled it with an aggressive acid. When the drilling was finished, he dropped the glass down the drill string and then he left it there for a while. Then the drill string was stripped out to the surface and the flask could be retrieved. Here you could see that the acid had etched the glass. But the etching did not reach up to the same level on each side of the flask. One side it was higher and that could only mean that the glass at the bottom of the borehole was somehow in an inclined position. Obviously the hole was not vertical but inclined. Now, of course, there was a lot of shouting, but then everybody realized measurement of inclination is not suited to characterize the well part alone. Okay, the well may be inclined, but nobody can tell if it goes to the north, the south, the east, or west, for example. So we still cannot say which of the neighbors might have stolen our oil. So Mr. Eastman had to go back into his thinking room and find a better solution to the problem. He began to remember some of the latest inventions that were available. The compass had of course been available for a very long time. And handy cameras had just recently been invented. There were also batteries and light bulbs and so on and so on. And so Mr. Eastman combined everything and invented a new measuring device. He took a spherical glass bowl and put a ball in it. Of course, the ball always moves to the lowest point of the bowl. Then he installed a compass below the glass bowl, and on top of it, he installed the camera, the light bulb, and a mechanical timer. This complex measuring device was now dropped down the drill string in the borehole. When the assembly landed at the bottom, the timer would turn on the light, and the camera would take a picture of the steel ball in the bowl above the compass. The position of the ball clearly indicated inclination and direction that is azimuth of the borehole that was of course a great success but again some people in the oil field were not convinced if you only measure the inclination and direction at one point you still don't have a clear picture about the entire well part you drilled you could have left your lease or you are still within it all right so mr eastman further improved this device and invented the multi-shot measuring system with this multi-shot measuring system, there is a whole film in the camera and the timer makes it possible to take photos at certain time intervals. With the multi-shot system, the well part could not be clearly evaluated. The device was dropped into the drill string after having finished the drilling work. Then the drill string was stripped out each time when a stand of drill pipes of 100 feet of length has been pulled out. The device down hold takes a picture of the position of the steel ball above the compass. At the surface, the pictures are evaluated and the well part calculated from these survey data. Now that the well part could be surveyed, the drillers could clearly see enough that their well threatened to leave the lease. And they started to think about technologies to correct the well part. But that is another story which will be covered in a different episode. In any case, we will still talk about it in our lecture, Drilling Engineering 1. I will be happy to have you in our classroom here in Freiburg. Look off.